Hello everyone, Philip with Progressive Technology here. We are an IT consulting and managed services organization. We provide guidance and, and management to the company so they can ultimately reach their operations and profitability goals and they can reduce risk and that risk includes cyber risks, cyber attack risks and, and many small businesses look to us to help protect them with that. We do provide many services which are quite crucial to that goal. Um, however, nothing truly replaces a user following daily best practices, practicing due diligence, and that's what this Cybersecurity Best Practices Month YouTube video series is all about. So this is the first topic video um, regarding passwords. Um, it's going to cover quite a bit of ground within uh, ultimately a simple topic, which is why we're breaking this down into part one and part two. In part one, we'll start off discussing uh, the importance of passwords and then highlighting the different ways that um, our passwords can be uh, compromised by cyber criminals. So ultimately, the reason passwords are so crucial is because they are the key to your systems and data. Think about it. You know, you know, you're looking at um, uh, HR certain systems with um, you know, uh, pay, you know, health information, social security accounts, um, all kinds of personal information. You're looking at customer information, locations, payment history, credit card information. You're looking at uh, customer databases, financial reports, all these sensitive things you don't want getting out to other places. One of the main ways they're protected is through you have to have a username and a password to get access to them. These passwords are the keys, and there are many ways on a, a daily basis and on a yearly basis that cyber criminals are able to get these keys to the house, your business house, from users um, and able to get that. So what are the main ways that they, they get those passwords? And that kind of goes into, well, then how do we... Uh, construct password best practices to reduce these risks. Cyber criminals can get your password in, in a plethora of ways, but the four main ways that they can get them is what we're going to highlight uh, today. So one way that they can get your password that you may have not heard of is what's called key locking. Okay. And key logging it can be software based, it can be hardware based. Essentially, key logging is um, I install a piece of software onto your machine. It could be browser based, it could come to you through a browser, you could know it or not know it. Same thing with different software applications. A lot of different, it could be a hypervisor based even, but there's a lot of different ways a keystroke logger can get embedded onto your system. It's going to record everything you type on your keyboard. All your keystrokes will be recorded, they'll be logged, and then a summary will be sent. Uh, either live or after it's finished pulling its info and then from there they can discern all kinds of information beyond your password but other sensitive sensitive information uh, which the password could be included in that. That is one way they can attack you. Uh, another way that a cyber criminal can get a hold of your password, not quite as flashy or robust but you know just as dangerous nonetheless is to guess what it is. Okay and we all know about that because we all at one point in time got locked out of an account or we couldn't remember the password to that one account we used that one time. But uh, we may do it as well. Guessing, pretty simple. You know, there's lots of information uh, about each of us out there on the web, on social media, on news articles, on directories, websites. They gather that. They start to go through the basics, unfortunately, and a lot of us probably still use the really uber simple passwords like, you know, password, password, or, you know, admin, admin. Um, or we may be using stuff that could be easily searched like dates of birth, family members, pet names, you know, other things that we see uh, commonly displayed on other profiles. They can guess it, okay, and it, it's not that hard. And, and, you know, once they go past the basic stuff, they'll start to use basic dictionary terms um, that – you know, a lot of people use for their passwords as well. After we get past the guessing, we get into a more sophisticated version of guessing, which is called a brute force kit. OK, 
okay? A brute force kit is, is essentially guessing, but it, it lets the machine, the computer software kit, do all the hard work. So in a brute force attack with a, with a kit, it's doing everything we just discussed with guessing, um, except for it's doing it at a much, much, much faster pace. Uh, this computer is going to be able to process all kinds of different uh, codes and eventually crack it by going through so many different possibilities at such a rapid, incalculable pace, it would seem, that uh, eventually they, they crack the code and they get your password. The final one we'll discuss are the major categories of how a cyber criminal can get a hold of your password and compromise your systems and applications is social engineering. Social engineering is extremely dangerous. You'll, you'll see us talk about social engineering perhaps in all of our uh, topic videos. And social engineering in the terms of uh, getting someone's password would be like someone throws up a spoof website and they ask for your user login credentials. It could be something that um, could be a, a compromised uh, application where they get it get you to do that. It could be through email and they ask you to email your username and password. There's a lot of different methods um, in terms of social engineering, but it's basically it's going to look legitimate. It's not, and they get you to give them your username and password. So we have to be aware of all these risks. So in part two, what we'll discuss is we'll go over uh, the basics, okay? We'll go over what we really emphasize for passwords, and we'll go over what we recommend beyond that to Make sure we're constructing passwords that mitigate against these risks, these four main categories of how cyber criminals go after our passwords. So inevitably, um, we can have strong password practices that protect our systems and our data and keep the keys in our hands and not in the hands of bad guys.